Hey everyone, it's Lee Diprose here from Fujifilm Australia. And Warwick Williams from Fujifilm Australia. And we're the Aussie Fuji guys. That's right. And today we're here and we're pretty excited because we've got the X-T2 with us and we wanted to talk a little about it. I've got the X-T1. So just looking at the two cameras, Warwick, what's the real difference between it? I mean, I noticed the dials at the top. The dials at the top are a little bit different. I mean, there are some subtle differences and there are some big differences. You mentioned the dials, so let's start there. They are a little bit taller, so easier to grab. And rather than having a hold down lock button, this actually has an on off lock button. So you press it once to lock it off and you can spin it around to your heart's content or lock it in place. And same thing exactly with the shutter dial as well. Just lock it in place or unlock it. Right, and also the screen as well. The screen has certainly changed a bit. We now have a ability to flip it vertically. It's a case of flipping it up that way. Uh, great for shooting overhead vertically. And uh, you can also flip it out yeah, any which way around, like so. All folds back together again. Now my X-T1 is a brilliant camera at autofocus. We saw the improvements from the X-T10 come into the X-T1. What has improved since this one? Well, I suppose the big benefit, like X-Pro2, is the new processor. It's a lot more powerful, a lot faster. And even though it's having to deal with the bigger sensor with the 24 megapixels, it really drives the camera very quickly. So overall, just shooting the picture is very quick and very fast. And the camera's recycle time is also very quick. And how many focus points do you get on the X-T2 as opposed to the X-T1? Well, now you can actually get up to 325 focus points wow. on here. Uh, and this especially benefits when you're using uh, the continuous autofocus. So if you're tracking a moving subject, and of course, that's backed up by a new system where you can actually choose some presets as well as create your own custom uh, continuous autofocus settings. So it's great for all those wildlife and sports photographers mm -hmm. who use the 100 to 400 yep. with the two times teleconverter or even the 1.4 times. I know that the, in some situations our cameras have struggled previously. Uh, I was actually at an indoor BMX track recently shooting some stunt riders there and this camera had no trouble whatsoever in, in keeping track with it. In fact, uh, I think out of the whole half a day shoot, there was probably about two or three pictures that it didn't actually get the focus right on. Right. Which, and I'm, there's probably you know, 1,500 pictures. <laughs> yeah, okay. Of that. And most of those were selfies. It was a BMX <laughs> track. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did have a go. <laughs> uh, okay. No, it's, Perfect. it's, it's, it's a... It's a great camera and it really will move Fujifilm into that sports and action area, definitely. Yep. Now, Mr. Williams, I know you're tinkering on this camera and as yeah. I see you tinkering, there's this C button. I see, there's uh, a C well, button. What is this well, C the button? Same as X-Pro2. Uh, if you uh, want to go beyond three stops of uh, exposure compensation, you can actually set this dial to C and then uh, access another two stops, so out to plus or minus five, by using the command dial. Okay, yeah. Warwick, I notice on the back of the camera, the X-T1, when I hold down the display back button, it brings up my function buttons. That's I've got right. a humongous amount, which is six buttons I can change. Yep. On here, you've got eight. Get out. You can change. Yeah. How? By the same thing. Press and hold the display back, and you can access all of those buttons and set them up according to your own tastes, if you don't like the factory taste. Yep. Okay. So I notice they're labelled differently. You've got function one through to six, but then there's these two because other buttons. Because they've now included the uh, auto exposure lock and auto focus lock buttons in amongst those. So Fantastic. again, uh, at people's requests, uh, this is what people ask for. So we've uh, acceded to their requests and allowed those two buttons to be changed as well. So I've. I've actually gone out and shot a lot of stuff in wet weather on mm -hmm. the X-T1 and it's been fantastic. The weather resistance ceiling on the camera is fantastic. When I open this door here, it's changed a lot from the X-T1 sure. on the X-T2. Can you just explain well, what's underneath the hood there? Well, for a start, you've got a, a, a bigger door that is not as flexible as the old one. It actually clips into place very nicely. Again, one of these things that we've done at the request of the general public. Yes. Now behind that door, however, we have a few changes. So we actually have a three and a half mil microphone socket. I don't have so that. You don't, no, you actually have to use a 2.5 to 3.5 adapter. Finally, the three and a half yeah. inch. Yep. Now you might say, but then you can also use that microphone socket and reconfigure it as a remote release. Right. Well, you don't have to do that on this one because you still get your two and a half mil socket for your remote release. Excellent. That so you don't means have to go and buy another use, accessory. Well, it means you can use the microphone and the remote release. Excellent. For the first time ever. 
And of course, we've got a, a little bit uh, more upmarket with the USB 3 connector. Excellent. And you also get a micro HDMI connector on there. Fantastic. And that's really important because of course the camera now has live HDMI out. So, so it's great for yep. anyone with a, so a if you're monitor. Using, yeah, if yep. you're using one of those external screens, yep, that's exactly what you want. Excellent. And even the birds agree. Yep, the wit bird said yes. <laughs> I used to play computer games a lot when I was young. And I had this awesome joystick. And I was able to, you know, control my spacecraft and do that. I can't do that on the X-T1, but I suppose some of the childhood joy comes back into this one because I can do that. On this one, yet yeah, like the uh, X-Pro2, we have the focus lever is the correct terminology. Not a joystick. Although everyone calls it a joystick. Right, <laughs> okay, the focus lever. Yeah, the focus lever. But anyway, you, you can press your joystick and uh, access your focus points, as I have here, the 325 focus points. And I'm looking at the back here, and it seriously looks like honeycomb. Yep. Um, on a micro scale because there's just so many points yep. you can choose from. I also noticed the button configuration is quite different on the screen. Um, the, the quick menu button is a little bit, well, it's probably about the same size as the X-T1, but it's in a different position. Yeah. Why is that? Oh, it's just ergonomics. Uh, the position of the focus lever or joystick uh, was decided to be moved to the position of the Q button. It's probably the Q button was more generally used on X-T1, but you'll use the focus lever more on X-T2. Yep. The Q button then has been moved north and uh, has been placed there. You can still customise your Q menu, of course. And of course, like X-Pro2, you get to uh, make your own My Menu selections Excellent. in here as well. Now, Warwick, something that everyone, and I mean everyone, that shoots with the X-T1, a little bit of a frustration, not too much for me, but on the actual back of the camera, you've got the up, down, left and right. Yep. These buttons look much better. They are actually uh, a little bit more proud. How did they say? A little bit more clicky could be the technical term. They are not so easy to bump, but remember, like the other cameras, you do have the ability to press and hold the menu OK button for three seconds and lock those buttons out. Excellent. So Warwick, I also noticed the video button on my X-T1 is here, but it's not on yours. No, they have removed that because to go into video mode now, you make a selection from the drive dial, right. which is uh, under the ISO. From there, you can access all your video settings through the menu. And it is the new menu system very similar to the X-Pro2. Yep, and the inner workings of this camera, my X-T1 is fantastic. I can use the UHS-2 memory speed yep. card in my, my SD card slot. What do you have under the hood? Well, on here you've got uh, a double SD card slot and they're both compatible with UHS-2. Fantastic. And talking about accessories, while we're talking about memory cards, battery grips. There is a battery grip for it and this battery grip is going to hold two batteries. Now, that combined with the battery that stays inside the camera means that you'll get around 910 shots. So everyone was asking for more battery, and that's exactly what Fuji found. And they are here. still hot swappable batteries. Excellent. So you actually pull the two out on a little tray, replace them, and of course the camera stays running with its uh, internal battery. Excellent. And video? Well, video, the long-awaited day has arrived. Yes. We have 4K. <laughs> and Fantastic. It, and it is a very good 4K. Yeah, and definitely check out the sample video that Fujifilm Japan have supplied. And if you haven't seen that, there's a link down below. Yep, uh, I'm pleased to say that Fujifilm is now taking the video side extremely seriously. Yep. But that's not just it. There's another big improvement too. And what's that? And that's the flash system. Right, okay. Uh, in, at the same time as this release, you will see the EFX500 flash. That's right. And this is a big change because it's not just a new flash, it's a whole new flash system. And the camera can actually control up to three flashes and you can program them from the camera itself. So now if you're doing a studio setup. Yeah, or well, wedding photography yeah, off camera yeah, flash. That's incredible. really, really perfect. Yeah. Now, I take a lot of photos with my X-T1, uh, especially landscape and things like that. Image quality is superb. Yeah. But then the X-Pro2 came out and it's fantastic. It's got an excellent sensor and processor. Mm -hmm. Do you get the same in this? And is anything different? I'd have to say, I think you get better image quality. They have, I mean, it's, it's the best so far. Right. And, uh, the, what they've learnt from X-Pro2 has been transferred into here and then some. So uh, whether you're shooting stills, whether you're shooting video, low light, high light, uh, it, it's improved all the way around. So we're going to do some paranormal camera testing because there are strange voices emanating from the tunnel here. So let's go and see if we can capture them with the amazing low light capabilities of the new X-T2. Exactly.
That is a deep tunnel. It is, and welcome to the tunnel. And apologies for the audio, but it is quite echoey. Echo, echo, echo. We're here with the X-T2, and we have a great light set up. We've got two little torches and a reflective dog leash to get some really cool orb effects where you can get this internal sort of glow inside this light painting effect. But Warwick, just tell us about the camera and what settings you've got for this low light capture. Well, for the purposes at hand, we're going to be using the 35 f2 lens set at 5.6. That gives us just enough depth of field to get everything in focus. Uh, we've actually got a shutter speed of 30 seconds and ISO is 200. And of course, we'll be using the two second self timer because we don't have a remote release on this occasion. Okay, well, sit back, relax, and enjoy the JPEG quality from this X-T2.